Hi, my name is Rafael Fabian Paisa Dharma, and this is my video assignment for English prose class. And on this occasion, I'd like to talk about tastefully done escapism and how a tastefully done escapism can help alleviate the harshness of everyday life. Now, to illustrate this escapism, uh, I'm going to talk about the adventure novel or rather adventure fable, The Alchemist, written by Paulo Coelho. And more specifically, two of The Alchemist's former elements that I think are some of the best in contemporary literature. These elements are characterization and imagery. Now let's start with the background of this book first. Uh, this book was originally written in Brazil by Paulo Coelho in 1988. Uh, too little success, actually. Koyo had trouble even getting a dozen copies of this sold within the first few months. But that all changed in 1993 when US-based publisher HarperCollins decided to pick The Alchemist up and publish it. It had a welcomed reception in the US and soon after the international market as well. Fast forward to today, the Alchemist has been translated to over 60 languages. It has sold around 65 million copies, and it's also obtained a number of literary awards, such as the 2004 Nielsen Gold Book Award, France's Grand Prix Littéraire L in 1995, and Germany's Corinne International Fiction Awards in 2002. Now, The Alchemist tells the tale of Santiago, a shepherd boy in the plains of Andalusia who embarks on a journey to seek out his dreams, or as the book puts it, personal legend. This book initially grabbed my attention by simply being an adventure novel. I have a weak spot for tales of journeys and adventures, but as I continue to read on, I realize that this is more than just your run-of-the-mill adventure book. I noticed that as I read along, I found myself increasingly enthralled by the world that Koyo has written. Um, reading along Santiago's journey, uh, I felt like I was there alongside him throughout his journey. Um, Santiago and the eclectic casts of characters that he meets along the way felt real. They felt believable. They felt alive in a way. The way that they piece their thoughts together, the way that they react to adversity and challenges, it's all very authentic to how someone in a similar state of mind as these characters might react in real life. Uh, this superb characterization is also complemented by the excellent imagery employed by Koyo. Now, as Santiago travels throughout the plains of southern Spain, uh, the bustling streets and markets of Marrakesh, and the harsh deserts of Egypt, all of these places are brought to life by the subtle yet intricate detail that Koyo put in. The way Koyo describes uh, the inhabitants, the sites, um, the nature, and the scent of these locales, it's a way that somehow makes these things come to life even on paper. It makes just these plain uh, plain ink on paper feel like they're transporting you straight to these places. Uh, okay, now looping back to my earlier topic of escapism. Tastefully done escapism, like this one, can help you learn something better for your life. It provides you with a place to run away from the harshness of everyday life, but it also provides you the fuel for you to go out and change your life, or at least the environment around you for the better. Now, the difference between tastefully done escapism like this and some amateur escapism done that, that only fulfills your fantasy and nothing more is when you put down the book on an amateur escapism book, uh... It stops right there. You don't get anything else from it. But this, and I'm talking seriously, it can literally help you change your life. And that's why I think that it's a very important book to read, read about nowadays in this hectic and 
often depressing socio-political climate of the day. So yeah, thank you for listening to my talk, or rather my rant about this book and escapism, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that I got my point across clearly. Thank you.